my, my wife lost her mum six years ago and she worked at a school. They give her one week off. Six months, I don't know if I'm going to keep this together. Six months ago, I lost my daughter. And uh, in a car, in a road traffic accident. And my wife had just started her new job. She'd been there five weeks. And they give her five months off. Wow. Uh, and, then, and then a phased return. I mean, I was self-employed, so I, I, I just, I've, I've just gone back to work after six months. But, you know, even two weeks, you know, it took three weeks to organise a funeral. Mm. So your daughter's lying in the funeral parlour, and you've got to go and see her every night after finishing work. Or, but it's just not, it's not enough. So you think the statutory leave should be much more than two weeks? Yeah, or, 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 or like one of the courts previous said, let the person come back when they need to, when they feel it's the right for them to come back. Okay, you can't take a year off and stuff like that, but, you know, they never pestered my wife. Uh, she just started the job. She's only five weeks into it. Mm. And she went back after five months, and then, as, as I say, it was a, a phase return. And was, it, was this in the private sector? Uh, yeah, yeah. And... I mean... I mean... It, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, to lose a daughter... Is is just oh, it's it's never going to end for us, never. And no one would expect it to either. I mean, I mean obviously, I've never been in that situation, but I know uh, from my own experience of bereavement that I mean, when I, I've lost both my parents now, and I know my life will never be the same. No, no, and and and, but you know, you always. People always say, you know, it, 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 it's, they've died the right way, but they might have died young. So it's still, it's still something that's going to affect you for the rest of your life. And you know, my my mum died thirty years ago, and I still think about her. I still mm. talk to her, you know. But when you lose a child, it's just oh, you just never think it's going to be you. But since I've lost my child, I can't believe the amount of people that I meet. That have lost children. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. And I'm going to ask you a personal question now, which feel free not to answer. But do you and your wife find it easy to talk about your daughter? Uh, it's difficult. Uh, my house is like a shrine. She's a uh, uh, bedroom is like a shrine. That's the way my wife wants to deal with it. Uh, sometimes I go in and we have got these flashing bits, keep flashing over, and these little cassette things and. And I can't even stand at the kitchen sink without crying. It's, but that's uh, you know I want her to deal with it her way, and I have to deal with it my way. I mean, I've been up to Edinburgh, and I've just had a tattoo of my daughter on my chest. That's my way of dealing with it. Well, I mean, look, as we've said several times, everyone has a different way. Um, I know two people that within literally days of a parent dying they they went to see um a psychic oh, i've done that you've done that yeah yeah did it help yes but i only listened to it once and i didn't listen to it again and uh it was you know i, I was i was a bit of a, 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 a you know i didn't really believe in it really yeah. I, but but the, some of the stuff they say you just you wonder how they get it, you know what I mean? I know maybe they can read I don't know. But my wife went recently, she went last week, and my daughter never come through. So It, it is, I remember, I remember doing a phone-in on psychics, actually not long after my mother died, um, bizarrely, and um, you have people on both sides of the argument, some absolutely swear by them, and, the, and then others think that they're complete frauds. I mean, I've I've always tended towards the latter view, but you are right when you say... That the things that they tell you, you think, how on earth do they know that? I, I, it's incredible. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, they basically told me what had happened to her. They told me that she'd taken a, a, a massive injury to the head and she was hit. But the, was th the thing that I don't understand with them, though, is that they can tell you these things, but how does it actually help? I mean, it's interesting that they, they seem to know these things, but how does it help anybody? deal with oh, the grief and the pain it doesn't it, it, all it does is is it, it just it um because they because they turn around and say um you know 
she's there with like Lisa's mum and my mum, mm. and and she's happy, and she's 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 got to grips with the, the spirit world, uh, and you know she's she's buzzing already up there because she was a buzzy girl, you know what I mean, and, uh, and that makes you feel. That gives you a little bit of something, you know. But what give me more, and if I could say, am I allowed to say this? My daughter gave her organs up. And we've had two, two letters back from people to which you saved families, which is those comfort big time. So if anyone can ever do that, they must do it. It gives you so much comfort. And I had a guy saying, thank you for your angel. It's... Well, I'm glad you said that because whenever we've done phone-ins on organ donation, you will get some people phoning in saying, um, oh, no, that's that's just wrong. But, I mean, I, I think it was exactly the right thing to do in my view, Terry. Oh. And well, we, knew she would, we knew she would want to do that. Yeah. And when you get these letters that uh, one lady teaches children and now she's got a chance to live, a man with two children went, went to have his lungs uh, four times and four times it went wrong and he said on that Sunday morning when I got the call and I went to the hospital and it's, it's worked and I'm alright and it's 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 nice to know and that does give you comfort that my daughter is, is alive somewhere in someone else but is she alive I remember taking a call some time ago I think it was on one of those phone-ins on organ donation and um, a guy had, like you, lost a daughter. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that there were eight people alive or their lives had been improved because yeah, of right. the organs that she donated. And it, well, Ellie, Ellie, has, Ellie has kept five people alive. We've only heard back from two, yeah. which, you know, my wife sits on a knife edge waiting for someone to come to send a letter to us to say it, you know. Because that's what you would do to, to to let these people know that someone is living on through your daughter. You know, it, it's nice. I think I think mate, and I stand off the subject slightly, but I think maybe that's that's what the organ donation people, if if they were more forward with letting people know. I know there's, there's things you can't tell and all that, but if if people knew that they have, they would know that someone else is living on. That, that the people had to respond. The organ donation would. Mm. I believe. Well, um, I know you were nervous about coming on because obviously it's a hugely painful subject. Um, you will have helped a lot of people who've been in a similar situation to you with what you've said, Terry. And um, I want to thank you for telling us your story. And um, your daughter would be very proud of you for doing so. Yes, my daughter's name is Ellie. I'm sorry. Terry, thank you. Um, I think I'd better go to a break. It's